Hello, and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this image. The technique I'm going to use for this picture does not need a great deal of space or equipment. The whole setup, including the camera, will easily fit within one square meter. Yet the quality of lighting in the finished image is very good and can suit a variety of different subjects. OK, so let me show you how I'm going to set all this up. I'm not using uh, a graduated background uh, or anything like that. I'm not even going to use a lighting stand. Uh, this is very, very basic and doesn't require a great deal of equipment at all. So I'm going to just make use of some offcuts of uh, card. This is mount board. Uh, so it's black on one side and white on the other. And I have a few bits of um, offcuts of wood. And of course, I have the tomato, which will be the subject. OK, so what I'm going to do is just place these pieces of wood on the desk here. And what these will do is just raise up uh, the base, which I'm going to use this piece of card for, just off the table. It just makes it a little easier to work with. There we go. Uh, and then I will just place the subject, which is uh, the tomato, on the card, like that. On the front of the camera, I have a 24 to 70 zoom lens at the 70 millimeter end, and on the top of the camera, I have a flash sync trigger. I'm using my camera uh, tethered into Capture One software so that you can easily see the results as I capture them. But you can do all this just with the screen on the back of your camera. OK, so to start with then, what I'm going to do is just take a test frame with no flash just to see uh, if there's any contamination from the house lights. OK, so here you can see um, that uh, we are getting a bit of contamination. You do have to guard against this uh, if you're using flash as your main lighting source uh, because it will cause a colour cast to the final image. So, what can I do about that? Well, if I have a look at the settings on the camera here, I have a shutter speed set of 1 60th of a second. Now the flash sync speed for that camera is 1 250th of a second. So I can increase that, which should be uh, sufficient to stop any of the ambient light contaminating the image. Uh, F8 is a reasonable uh, aperture, so I'll just leave that where it is. So we'll try that one again. There we go. And there is a small amount of contamination left, but nothing to speak of. So I think that should be OK. OK, with that experiment complete, it's time to set up the lighting. Now, for the lighting, I'm going to use uh, this flash head on a retort stand. This isn't particularly powerful. You don't need a great deal of energy for this. Uh, and using a retort stand gives you a very compact result. It's much more compact to do that than to try and fit this on some form of lighting stand. Right, so I'll just place that vaguely over the top of the subject, like so, and we'll just take a test image. Arbitrary exposure, uh, we'll set that once we've seen the first image. OK, and we can immediately see from that that it's far too bright. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do uh, is just turn down the energy uh, on this flash by about four stops. So I'll just take four stops off that, and we'll try that again. There we are, that's much better. Now, the exposure's OK, um, but our background is definitely not white at the moment. The foreground might be. Uh, so we just need to address that. And to do that, what I'm going to do is make use of another piece of this card. So basically, I'm just going to put this at the back here, and we'll just prop that up with one of these pieces of wood. There we go. Something like that. And we'll just take another test image. OK, so we can see from this we have now got a white background. 
uh, and uh, it's not looking too bad but the quality of the light here uh, is very harsh you can see from the uh, the shadow uh, that the shadow underneath the tomato is actually quite sharp uh, and we want something altogether softer using a flash head like this uh, or a speed light for that matter um, will approximate to a point light source at this sort of distance so that is why you end up with a hard shadow underneath the subject in order to make that softer you need to diffuse it uh, so in order to do that what I'm going to do is make use of one of these shoot through umbrellas this particular one is a combination umbrella uh, and they're a bit available for about 17 pounds 22 dollars uh, something like that and you can use them for shoot through or you can change the surface uh, for either a black or a white umbrella so what I'm going to do is just fit this to this head there we are so I've got that now fitted uh, to the uh, the flash head I'll just check through the viewfinder just to make sure that it's not actually appearing in the image which seems okay so with that fitted we'll just take another image okay we can see that in this capture uh, the quality of the lighting is very different this is what we had before and this is what we've got now the shadow underneath the tomato has almost completely disappeared it's very very soft overall also we seem to have lost a bit of exposure um, that's probably due to quite a lot of the light actually reflecting off the inside uh, of this umbrella uh, so what I'll do is just add one stop to the energy just to compensate for that we'll try that again there we are that's better that's brought it up a bit but it's still very very soft so what ideally I think we want is somewhere in between the two you want to be in between the very soft result that we've got now and the very hard result that we had with just the bare head the way to achieve that is really simple without moving the position of this head all I'm going to do is pull the umbrella up so it's a lot closer to the head like this what that will do is add a hot spot in the middle of the umbrella here uh, and that will give you uh, a less diffused light uh, coming out so if we just grab an image I'll show you what I mean and if you look at the shadow underneath our subject I show you what we had before there was virtually no shadow with this one and then with the bare head there was a very sharp shadow and what we have now is somewhere in between which gives a very pleasing soft result but not too soft you still have some modeling and you still have some shape going on on the actual tomato itself so at this stage what I think I'll do is just just zoom in to check the focus uh, and you can see that at the front here it's actually going out of focus a bit and at the back it's going out of focus as well uh, so I need to have a bigger depth of field so to achieve that what I will do is take the aperture from f8 um, up to f16 which should give me uh, a deeper depth of field so the difference between f8 and f16 is two stops so I'll add two stops of energy to the light to compensate and give that another go there we are that's getting better I flip between these two images that's what we had before and this is what we've got now still not quite there let's change the aperture to f22 uh, that is uh, one more stop of energy required to keep the lighting the same so I'll just add another stop there we are that's got it 
we can see now that we've got uh, a sharp result from front to back. Uh, so we've gone from this to this. So it's starting to come together. The next thing I want to do is just to increase the contrast down the sides of the tomato. And in order to do that, I'm just going to make use of yet more bits of card. Again, just black and white card. This time I'm going to use the black side. And I'm going to place the black side just near the tomato like this. So that I end up with uh, what people tend to call negative fill. Basically, it's just stopping the white reflection hitting the tomato itself. So if I just grab an image, I'll show you what I mean. So you can see down this side now, uh, this is considerably darker and a deeper red as a result. If I go to what we had before, you can see that you've got a little bit of flare just coming around the edge of the tomato, and now that has more or less disappeared. So that's one side done. I'll just see if it needs the other side. I'll just hold this in whilst I grab an image. So in this capture, you can see the effect of holding the card in position. Um, it's brought this edge out uh, a little more. It was starting to get a little bit lost uh, with the background being so white. Uh, so this is what we had before. And this is what we've got now. So with that image now captured, it just remains to go into Photoshop and do the post-production. So this is the file of that image opened up in Photoshop. Uh, now the first thing I'm going to do uh, is just make a copy of uh, the background. So I've got a new layer to play with. And I keep this one uh, in case I want to go back to the original, like so. OK, so now having a look at the image, uh, there's a few things that we need to do, a bit of cleaning up. Uh, and the first of which is um, this background here isn't actually white. It's very close to white, but not quite there. Uh, if we just pull the info card in and just move the cursor around, you can see from the numbers there uh, that uh, it is well under white, which would be uh, 255. So I think the easiest way to address that is just to uh, adjust that image by going to the adjustments and coming down to where it says levels and just clicking on that. What I'm going to do is set a new white point. So these are the uh, color pickers within the levels dialog box. The one on the end here is the white point. Uh, the one on the other end is the black point. We're not too bothered about that at the moment, so I'll just pick a new white point. So I'll click on that icon. Now we'll just take a sample uh, around the back here on the background. There we are. Now that's brought that uh, background up to almost uh, white in most of the places. There's just a little bit just down here, which hasn't quite got there. So what I'm going to do is just carefully place the cursor on that point, click white again, and there we go. So with that done, I'll click on OK. Uh, we'll just move the info box back out of the way. Right. Uh, so now what I need to do is just get rid of all the rest of these distractions that are in the uh, image here. So a good way of doing that non-destructively uh, is just to add a new layer, which I will do like that. Uh, then come over to uh, the color picker down here. Just make sure black and white is selected and that white is selected as the foreground color. Then I'll just go to a paintbrush see what that's like. Yeah, that's reasonable hardness. Let me just try it out up here. Yeah, that looks okay. Now, very close to the tomato, we know, because we checked it with the uh, info dialog box, that we've got pure white. So starting from there and just working out, I'll just paint literally 
white onto the background. There we are. So now we have pure white uh, everywhere apart from the tomato and we still have the uh, nice shadow underneath which is grounding it into the rest of the image. So if I show you what was before, turn that layer off, that's what we had before and that's what we've got now. And that's what we started with. So it's moved along quite a long way, which is good. So finally, what I will do is just select uh, a crop. So we'll just click on the crop tool. And I'm going to pick a ratio of 16 by 9, uh, because I always use these pictures for video use, and this fits the video very well. Uh, but you want to pick something which will complement your subject. Uh, now, the guides that I have on here are the so-called rule of thirds. Um, and I don't think that's very appropriate for this uh, subject. So I'm just going to click on this icon here and change that to the golden ratio. There we are. Uh, and now, with that selected, I can move my subject around uh, until I've got it in the place that I want it. Something like that. Maybe a bit smaller. There we are. I'll click on OK to confirm that's what I want. And there is my finished image. Now, considering how this was achieved, I think that is a pretty good result. You've got a pure white background. You've got some grounding in there with the shadow. And yet you still haven't lost the image uh, into the background uh, on the highlights. You've got some nice modeling uh, in the lighting. And that was all achieved just with one flash and a reasonably priced umbrella. OK, well, I hope you like watching that. And if you like seeing how I've done these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.